Hi, I'm Christy. Welcome to my channel. Don't look at my eyes. I'll tell you why later or they are bad. Just only look at the skin and the lips, okay? If you would like to see how I done this nice, dewy, fresh skin, perfect for holiday, doable in under about five minutes, really. And I'm also using the new Lush Slapstick Foundation in it. So if you want to see how I done it, keep watching. Okay, so the first step in my skincare routine is eyes, and I'm using the Vitamin E Eyes Cube from The Body Shop. This is really good for hydrating under my eyes without feeling heavy at all, and it also has a really nice cooling effect to it, so my eyes feel instantly more awake. I also just think the way this is packaged is really handy for when you are travelling about, so ideal for kind of holiday skincare. To moisturise the rest of my skin, I am using the Vanishing Cream by Lush. I absolutely love this moisturiser. I think it's perfect for oily skin because once you've got it on, it literally does vanish into nothing and feel like you aren't wearing any product at all. This is a really nice product for under makeup. It works so well to boost hydration and control shine throughout the day. Um, my makeup sits so nice on top of it. I genuinely do think I would struggle to find a day moisturiser that I like more than this one. It also smells amazing, it's got neroli and geranium in there but I can mostly smell lavender which is my favourite scent so that's a big plus from me. So this step is probably the most important one of all, particularly in summertime when the sun's out a little bit more and it is of course a sunscreen. I am using this Daily Sunscreen Gel Cream by Youth Lab. It is Factor 50 and it is targeted specifically to specifically it is targeted specifically to people with oily skin when it comes out it is sort of got a tint to it so that when you put it on you can make sure that you're getting your entire face and neck with it and then that blends and fades into nothing and um, the product also smells really nice it smells like it smells like babies that sounds weird but it smells like babies in a good way Again, my makeup sits really nicely on top of this product and it doesn't feel too heavy on my skin or anything like that when you're buying a sunscreen, I would always recommend that you go for one with an SPF of 30 and above. Um, I have one that's a 50, but usually 30 is enough for most people. I think the, kind of, the difference between 30 and 50 is only something like 50 blocks out 2% more of the sun's rays than what 30 does. It's either 2 or 3%, I can't remember which. But if you are much more susceptible to burning, you have extremely fair skin, or you're just extra cautious, or like you have a higher chance of stuff like skin cancer then you probably should be using a 50 but for the most part 30 is okay for most people you also want to make sure that you're buying an spf that specifies that it's broad spectrum so basically what that means is that it protects your skin from the sun's uva rays and the uvb rays because they are both different they damage your skin in different ways and a lot of sun cream out there only targets one of them when you should really have a broad spectrum spf to ensure that your sun your skin is getting all the protection that it can get so basically UVA rays penetrate deeper into the skin than UVB rays do and UVA rays are responsible for skin aging like lines and wrinkles and stuff like that. UVB rays damage the top layer of your skin and they are the ones that are responsible for burning and redness etc. UVA and UVB rays damage your skin in different ways and they have both been proven to be responsible for causing skin cancer so it is really important that you are making sure that you buy a broad spectrum SPF foundation I am using the brand new slapstick foundation by Lush if you don't know Lush have just brought out their own range of solid foundations if I can get it out I'll show you what it looks like this is what they look like they this foundation contains so many good ingredients for hydrating your skin such as coconut oil, jojoba oil, rose wax um, there's loads of other good ingredients in there. I'll leave a link below to the foundation so that you can read a little bit more about it. Also 10% of profits from this foundation do go towards a charity so again that will be in the link below to Lush's website and you can learn a little bit more about that. And of course it is 100% cruelty free as everything from Lush is and it is also a vegan foundation which is amazing. So I wore this foundation yesterday for the first time and I was actually at a trampolining park and it lasted perfectly all day. Let me tell you my skin looked glorious. It feels so light and so natural on your skin that it almost looked like I wasn't wearing anything. It was just like my skin but better. I just had the, the nicest, dewiest glow to my skin the entire day. It lasted about, 
I think I had it on for about 10 hours and sweating in a trampoline in park and it's really warm in Scotland at the moment so it lasted really well. I mean I know that this looks ridiculously dark for my skin and that's because it is. I'm going on holiday tomorrow and I've still to fake tan tonight so I did get a darker shade for me. Um, I'm going to need to get a hold of a lighter one for when I'm not wearing tan but when I am tanned this is the colour match that I'm going to be. This is the shade 18C that I've got but um, yeah far too dark for me without a tan but I will be getting a tan so don't you worry because I'm sure you are worrying. I actually just blended this out with my fingers yesterday so I'm going to do the same again today but once I can seal I'm going to kind of go over everything with my beauty sponge anyway and I've just realised that I forgot to wet my beauty sponge so I better go and do that. To conceal any blemishes etc I'm just going to use the Revolution Concealing Divine Concealer in the shade C8.5. I'm just applying this on any spots or redness that I want covered up. I'm not actually going to put anything on my eyelids at all because I'm keeping this quite natural looking and I've just been really liking the way that it looks when I have nothing on my eyes at the moment. I'm going to do a really bold lip with no eyeballs. It does say that this concealer's full coverage but I don't think it is. I think it's medium coverage actually. Um, it is quite buildable but it's definitely not a full coverage concealer in my opinion. And to add a little bit more brightness under my eyes, I'm using the Collection Last and Perfection Concealer in the shade Fair One. This is just a little bit lighter than the concealer that I've just used and this will just help to really waken up my eyeballs. I've just realised I've not had my light on the entire time. That would have been helpful. I'm not filming it all again. So to set all of that in place, I'm going to be using another Lush product, which is currently all over me. It's the Powdered Sunshine Sunscreen from Lush, and this is an SPF of 15. This just helps to keep my makeup in place all day. I don't know why I'm wiggling on this in front of myself. This is a staple in my makeup bag. I've been using this for a couple of years now, and it's a product that I always, always repurchase. So I'm just dipping my brush into that and packing that on mostly where I put the concealer like my t-zone or areas that I know that my makeup tends to crease throughout the day you know the gist by now probably so although powders help to keep your makeup in place all day I don't really like the look of having that kind of thick powdery layer over my skin what I find helps that is just spraying some sort of liquid over the top of it something nice and hydrating to boost your skin's moisture levels again and just kind of make it look more like skin again instead of a thick layer of powder so I'm using the Body Shop Coco Calming Facial Mist and um, this hydrates and soothes your skin. It's just also really nice to refresh your face throughout the day if you're out and about on holiday or you're too warm and this of course is makeup friendly as well um, and I just I really like the smell, I really like the way it feels and I really like the way that it makes my skin look. I do also think if you've powdered your face you really need to go in with some sort of facial mist before you go in with a highlighter or your highlighter is just going to look like bitty and chunky rather than like a nice glow. So for highlighter I'm using the Vivid Bake Highlighter by Lush in the shade Peach Lights and I'm just taking that on a fan brush for my cheekbones up into my temples. And on a smaller brush I'm taking that same highlighter from my nose, my cupid's bow, my brow bone and the inner corner of my eyes. To warm up my skin and can I create that summer bronzy glow I'm using the Revolution Ultra Bronze Bronzer. I'm just taking that on a fluffy brush and I'm using that round the sides of my forehead, onto my temples, under my cheekbones, round my jaw and down my neck. And then with that same bronzer but on a more precise brush, I'm just taking it and I'm using it to carve out my cheekbones ever so slightly. Just keeping it to the very, very close to my hairline so it's more of a natural contoured look rather than something super strong and all the way down to my mouth. I'm also just going to use this to define, and I'm also just going to use this to define my nose a little bit as well. Just make sure before you do this you're tapping off any excess. I just like to kind of blot it on my arm a little bit.
before I move on to brows, I just like to give my face another little spray with this body shop mist. Not in my mouth. I just think, again, this helps to just make the powdery just look more like it's part of my own skin and it's more like a natural glow. I'm choking on my own tongue. Just more like a natural glow and a natural bronze rather than makeup. For brows, I'm using the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Brunette, as I do all the time. And because I'm just going for a really natural brow, I'm actually really only using this to draw in inner... Say words proper. I'm really only using this to kind of elongate the inner section of my eyebrow. Just because my eyebrows kind of stop here. So what I just do is draw a line underneath where I would like to draw my brow in. And then just kind of create little hair-like strokes at the front here. I don't know why, but I always do this a mess when I'm on camera. And I don't, I don't, don't know why. And I'm taking the spoolie end of this to just brush it out and get rid of any harsh edges. And to fill in the rest of my brows, I'm using the Glossier Boy Brow in the shade... I think this is a... Oh yeah, just in the shade brown it's called. And I'm just brushing this through the rest of my brow hairs. This is actually the first Glossier product that I've ever tried and I am so impressed with it. I love how it makes my brows look. I only bought it because I've seen so many people raving about it online. But I think this is perfect if you have very sparse brows like myself. Or you want to make them look really thick and bushy but naturally messy. Kind of those supermodel brows that you would call them. Um, that's kind of the look I'm going for in this. This product just helps me achieve that best I can with my very sparse brows. And to keep all of this in place the entire day without having to do any touch-ups, I'm using the Revolution Pro Fix Oil Control Fixing Spray. I've been using this lately and it's really good. Like I said, this is going to be like third time to use it in this video. But I do have oily skin and in the summer I get so, so shiny. So for any of my shiny gals out there, this is the product for you. And this like glues your makeup to your face. This is not going anywhere for the rest of the day, let me tell you. I also just like to fan setting sprays in until they're completely dry. I heard somewhere, I'm sure it was like Mario, you know, like Kim Kardashian's makeup artist, that says that he fans in her setting spray after her foundation to help it stick all day. So I've started doing, well, I started doing that like about a year ago and I think it definitely works. Now I'm kind of undecided if I want to do anything at all on my eyes. Um, I might just leave it like this, I might not even put mascara on. I don't know if you can see but I actually had a lash lift the other day and so my eyelashes just are standing up a little bit more. Just in a really natural kind of way so I kind of like the look of just that with a bold lip. See for when you are like on holiday and you can't be bored checking how your eye makeup's doing or if your mascara's running, I think that's really nice. But if I was going to do something, I would just stick like a waterproof mascara on and some lashes. But I'll put my lipstick on and I'll see how it looks and see if I want to put lashes on or not. For lips, I am using the Golden Rose Liquid Matte Lipstick. It says that it's kiss proof here. It isn't. It does transfer a little bit. But I actually think that's okay because I feel like lipsticks that transfer slightly are much more comfortable on the lips than ones that dry in completely matte. Um, and I have had this on for entire days before, not like days, but an entire day and um, it's not went anywhere so that's fine and I've not had to like touch it up at all even though I've been eating and stuff and this is in the shade 18. You actually get these, well, I got this one from Primark, I fucking love Primark, if, if you're not shopping at Primark, what are you doing with your life? Probably shopping somewhere better. And I just think that's such a pretty colour for in the summer and even though like the rest of your makeup looks really natural it just still it kind of brightens you up a little bit and makes you look a little bit more put together. Also if you didn't want something quite so bold on your lips um, I also just think this would look really nice with a nude or even with just a clear gloss or sometimes it is just really nice to put a lip balm on when it's warm outside if your lips are dry so there's options. 
So I think this is just really pretty on its own, but I will just show you what it would be like if I'd done some eye makeup. I don't actually own a waterproof mascara. So it would have been handy if I did because you know like if you're in and out the water or like you're just sweating a lot it's good to have that. But what I'm actually just going to do is I'm just going to put mascara on my top lashes instead of my bottom lashes. And this collection Fast Stroke Mascara doesn't really tend to transfer it anything on me like down my eyes. So I'm going to pop that on and I'm going to pop some lashes on and I am using the... Is it Sosu by Suzanne Jackson lashes in the shade... in the shade, it's not a shade in the style Dubai so I'm going to go and pop these on and I'll be back in a second <sighs> well that was a disaster I just had a bit of a nightmare with that so I put the lashes on I realised that they looked ridiculous on their own so I thought you know what I'm just going to draw a wing in and then that'll be nice so it resulted in me kind of trying to like draw a wing in around my eyelashes and because they're so long and so thick I couldn't do it properly so which resulted in two wings that are like not twins, not sisters, like they never even like kind of knew each other to say hi to ten years ago in high school, like they just are like different, they are like from different worlds. So I mean it, it looks not awful but not great. To be honest I think I really preferred it anyway, it's more summery and nice when I had nothing on my eyes especially with this really bold look but this just kind of gave you options and this video was more about the skin and stuff anyway, nice healthy holiday summer skin. So I hope that you have enjoyed it anyway and I hope that you've learned something new. If you have please give it a like and subscribe if you would like to see more videos and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!